live from the Moscone Center in San Francisco, California. It's The Cube at AWS Summit 2015. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live inside theCUBE in San Francisco at Moscone North. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. My co-host, Mark Farley, distinguished guest this week and uh, substitutes for Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Um, you're doing great. You've been, you're doing better than both Dave and Stu combined. Yeah, well, we'll see. <laughs> everybody uh, send in your ballots now, right? Yeah, it's fun right. being a virtual stool. You're doing great. Yeah. Uh, our next guest is Sharoop Sayaram with Intel Security. Welcome to theCUBE. Hey, John. Great to see you guys. So, so Intel, obviously, big banner. I saw you guys, big headline sponsor here for Amazon uh, Web Services Summit, so congratulations. Thank you. Getting the word out. Uh -huh. um, you got some stuff that you're launching, obviously, Intel inside, um, for us old school generation. You know, it's good business for you to have more and more yeah. features and computing. Yeah. So what are you guys announcing here? So today, what we've done is we put together a new solution called PCS, which stands for McAfee Public Cloud Server Security. And uh, we made it available on the AWS Marketplace. And to describe it in like one sentence, it is uh, you know, the security tools that someone needs to secure their AWS EC2 instances. So what's the bottom line from Intel's perspective on security? Obviously, RSA is coming up around the corner, okay? Um, the perimeters, no longer. Correct. Virtualization's exploding. We were talking earlier, Mark and I, about you know, the impact of virtualization, the storage, software defined storage. You're getting down to the root level. There's new startups that are busting out, doing new new paradigm security. What is the what is the right way to do security in this new cloud environment where it's always agile, it's lower cost, it's adaptive, all this stuff's happening. What's what's going on? The workloads are driving it. What should people be doing? So you're absolutely right that in the public cloud and AWS and Azure and those kind of clouds, the perimeter has effectively disappeared. I mean, sometimes you do have a perimeter when you have the VPC, but then we have a ton of these customers who are designing for the cloud and they're setting up auto-scaling environments. And when you have an auto-scaling environment, right, you don't really have a perimeter, right? Mm. And you know, so the security is shifting from the perimeter to the host, right? So now, typically, people used to rely on a network IPS, a network firewall at the perimeter, and in a traditional data center, nobody invested much in server security, right? The security was at the perimeter. But now, once you go to AWS, you know, the focus is back on each one of the servers itself, rather than the perimeter. So, you know, what you need is antivirus, a firewall, an IPS, and encryption solutions all in your host. And that way you get the most out of your uh, cloud usage. So is this at the instance? Yes, okay. security right at your Windows and Linux EC2 instances. Okay. So the applications are driving. We heard a couple of things that got my attention. You mentioned McAfee. Mm -hmm. Gets me thinking about, okay, application security. We were talking about perimeters in the network earlier. Um, you got VDI on stage mentioned. The third of the cost of VDI, I think what is Jassy said, right. implying workspaces is doing pretty well, right. right? So, okay. So do I secure the app? And so what is the strategy? Do you go app top down or you go bottom up infrastructure, both? So I think in the, in the workspaces context, which is desktop as a service, I think the security model remains similar to you know, securing your PC that you have in front of you. So, you know, it is like securing any other desktop. But when you're talking about your server environment, your virtual servers, uh, you know, the focus is more at the infrastructure security level. Uh, and Amazon you know, gives you a great amount of hypervisor security, physical securities, they give you access controls. But within the OS, you know, the customer owns the security, right? The data and you know, the security responsibility of within the server, the customer has to take ownership of that. And that's why you see a ton of security vendors out here providing solutions for that. So at the end of the day, it becomes a joint security proposition where the, you know, a bunch of the vendors as well as AWS together offer a complete security solution for customers. But there's no one general purpose security solution anymore because we heard from Splunk, yeah. people are using data to be adaptive and flexible to have security policies based upon the workloads. That's right. And then now you got network policy, yeah. I mean, Mark, and storage, yeah. we talked on that earlier. What's your take on all this? Well, you know, you've seen different you know, storage, network level security. Oh, security's really interesting, you know, in, in the storage space, uh, people seldom do it because of the performance hit, 
right? So you just assume that, you just hope and pray that somebody else somewhere is doing it because at the storage level, you're not, you start to see, you start to see security coming in now with data ware storage. You, know, you, you listen to Paula Long from Data Gravity talk, you know, and they talk about the things that they can do with that are more audit oriented. Who's accessing data and when? But that, that's sort of kind of like, uh, you know, what's the difference between what you're doing and, and CloudTrail, right? So uh, I guess Mike, Mike, I'm going to answer your question by turning yeah, it back no, over to Ruben and saying, Looking so, for you for some help. Yeah, I'm, I am looking for help. <laughs> uh, security always makes me look for help. So, how do you how do you play with or alongside or do you use CloudTrail in what you're doing or? Sure. Uh, yeah, CloudTrail is a great security uh, framework that <clears throat> AWS offers, but uh, you know there needs to be an analytics layer which you know consumes the information from CloudTrail and identifies security incidents or threats mm -hmm. which uh, you know are at a macro level, right? So we have a product called McAfee ESM, Enterprise Security Manager. It is a SIM solution. It consumes log information from you know, the endpoint, from network devices, and a lot of uh, security events. And that consumes the cloud trail feed as well, right? And now you have information from so many different directions, and you correlate all of that, and you're able to identify macro security trends, right? Because if you're just looking at CloudTrail alone, out of context from the other events, you will not be able to identify those macro trends. Uh, so how close to real time uh, can somebody get, can somebody be uh, aware that there may be a breach going on or how, I mean, I mean that's the idea, right? Is to identify a breach as soon as possible. Yeah. Realistically, what can you do? What, how soon can that, you identify something? It's a very good question. So, you know, there's been a, emergence of a new category called ETDR, that stands for Endpoint Threat Detection and Response. And uh, I'd say in the past 12 months or so, this category has become very popular, where you know everyone assumes that you've already been breached, right? Now that you've been breached, how do you identify where your breaches? How do you see where it's been spread? And how do you remediate all of that, right? So there are a bunch of tools to do that, and you know, very recently McAfee just announced a technology called Active Response, Active response. That's great. So the idea of active response is, you know, we'll be able to query all your systems instantaneously, discover where your breaches, and take action. So where's this information coming from? Is it coming from servers, storage, networks? Uh, it, it is coming from each one of the servers, yeah. Okay. The EC2 instances. Okay. So on the security thing I said earlier, um, we don't need any help on security because it's so broken. There's no help anyone could have. That is what you so said. You I, said it was, it was I think so you used the word effed up. Effed up, I mean. That's a word. So yeah. we are hearing security being broken everywhere and you know, the guys at Illumio, which is a startup in, in, in our area, yeah. are taking a different attack. There's all kinds of different right. philosophies. Right. But the bottom line is the perimeter kind of yeah. model's dead. Yeah. That's a general security That's practice. Right. So now the philosophies are changing. So I want to get your take on RSA coming up. What you think is going to be the top themes there because this is the big conversation because the hacking is serious. The White House just got recently hacked. I mean, this is a serious issue right now. I mean, people are in denial. It's broken. Yeah. And it's being re-architected in real time. Right. So no one really has that blueprint yet. Sure. This variety approach is, I want to get your take. What you think needs to be done. Sure. Thoughts, ideas, vision. Absolutely. And then what's going to happen so, at RSA this year? So John, the, I mean, I agree with you that security is kind of broken. And the reason is, uh, you know, it's mostly point solutions. So it, you know, Palo Alto provides net, great network security, Symantec provides great endpoint security, Splunk provides great analytics, but then now you're working with three different vendors which are not necessarily connected with each other, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, in McAfee we believe in the security connected strategy, where we try security to- Security what? Connected. Connected. That's right. And we actually have a technology called DXL, data exchange layer, where the different pieces of security, they work with each other, right? So, you know, the old adage goes one plus one equals three. Mm -hmm. you, know, yeah. you know, that's the value proposition that we keep pushing. So, and like I was telling Mark as well, uh, you know, there is this new category of solutions called threat detection and response is, yeah, you're going to get breached anyways. Now that you got breached, how do you find what your damage is and how do you fix it? So that's going to be a big theme in RSA coming up. And what about RSA? What's the bloodbath going to look like at RSA? Is there going to be a big, you know, cage match between different vendors, our users are revolting, certainly. What's going to happen at RSA, in your opinion? You know, you know what, uh, I think uh, you know, the industry is kind of matured is what I'm seeing. It's, it's not like them fighting against each other. 
so in fact, even uh, Obama has created this uh, security telco body, and they, a lot of the top security vendors are, you know, are part of the board. So I think Palo Alto Networks, uh, you know, CEO is the chairman, and Intel's president, Renia James, she's the vice chairman. And the different security vendors are coming together, and they are actually working as an alliance. Right, so you know that's the only way you beat the bad guys is you know exchange threat information. You work well with each other's solutions, uh, and yeah, I mean if you compete with each other, like you know the bad guys are going to win. So I would I would guess that there uh, that Intel is working on uh, integrating security technology with the chips that they're building. Uh, are there things that you can talk about that uh, are going on there? Uh, I I can talk about a bit. So not uh, the future stuff, but mm -hmm. stuff that is public information. So, you know, Intel's ASNI has been out there for a long time, which makes encryption like pretty, you know, native speed encryption, right? Uh, so that's been a, you know, promising chip feature which has helped the security industry. And then there's been the TXT and TPM technology, which helps measure the trust uh, and the attestation involved in your stack once it boots up because your your infrastructure stack includes the physical uh, you know chip the hypervisor and then the guest operating system there's so many la layers in the infrastructure and you need to measure whether any one of them have been tampered right so intel has great technology for that and then the next technology which intel has uh, publicized is something called sgx it stands for software guard extensions and it's a secure enclave and uh, you know that's a place in the chip where you can store secure information, do secure operations, and we think it will be a game changer for you know cloud security. Hmm. All right. Well, we really appreciate you coming on the cube. We're getting the hook here, getting towards the end of the day. Uh, thanks so much for joining uh, on, us on the cube and sharing your insight. We really appreciate. it. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Okay, Thank we are you. live here in San Francisco. This is the cube. John Furrier, Mark Farley. We'll be back after this short break with our next guest. <laughs>